Everybody, welcome to the show. We've got a great show for you today. First of all, we're talking all things Olympics. Billions tuned in around the world over the weekend for the beginning of the Summer Olympics, which I love. While most attention will focus on the athletes and the tally of medals, John Jessup explains why some see a golden opportunity for evangelism. I do feel at the end of the day that I'm called to preach the good news. While Daniel Roberts secured a spot on Team USA running the 110-meter hurdles, being defined by his faith is more important than being viewed as an elite athlete. We're all here to worship God our own special way, and this is just a different way that I use my abilities and my gifts to bring glory to Him. Beyond his teammates and other Christian competitors, he's getting support through prayer and spiritual reinforcement from Athletes in Action and other ministries like Frank Shelton's. And I've just learned that when we show up, God shows off. <laughs> this is Shelton's fourth Olympics serving as a chaplain. His team of volunteers, including former Olympians, crosses paths with athletes, coaches, and visitors. Rio, we saw 1,054 people give their life to Christ, gold medalists, three Uber drivers, <laughs> fans, spectators. He's hoping for even more in Paris, where streets flooded over in May with some 25,000 people at a march for Jesus. Youth with a Mission sees the Olympics through an evangelistic lens, partnering with Parisian churches for round-the-clock prayer and worship campaigns. Which is so cool just to see people coming from the, like literally the ends of the world to Paris to proclaim Jesus. But we're not just working with YWAM bases, we're working with local churches, churches from other countries as well, but we're, we're trying to activate Paris with us. With attention focused on the world of sport, some current and retired athletes are seizing the opportunity to point others to the only thing they say really matters. Hi everyone, I'm Jordan Gray. My name is Joetta. I'm a four-time Olympian. Hello, my name is Adrian Weinberg. I'm an athlete with Team USA from Los Angeles, California. The UK's Marilyn Okoro, who earned bronze in the 2008 Beijing Olympics, is one of several athletes sharing the verse of the day in the YouVersion Bible app. And our verse of the day is taken from Matthew chapter 19. There's a lot of synergies between, you know, being a, an athlete on, you know, whatever sport discipline you choose as to being a spiritual athlete. And I didn't win every race, you know, but he allowed that because it was going to teach me something. And I, my, my job was to, to not give up. My job was to, you know, faith is like a muscle and sometimes it's super strong and sometimes it's weak and needs sharpening. Daniel, who suffered injuries and setbacks of his own, agrees. Maybe it's something that was meant for me to grow and change so that I can be the man of God that I'm meant to be. Athletes promoting their faith is nothing new. At the 1924 Paris Olympics, the man known as the Flying Scotsman, Eric Little, refused to run on a Sunday to attend church. In the following days, he set a world record and picked up Olympic gold. 100 years later, his witness is an inspiration to the biblical charge, whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. John Jessup, CBN News, Washington. Amazing stuff, amazing stories. We'll be keeping an eye on that. Well, up next, how prayer shaped the life of a millennial and why she's now challenging others to pursue the power of intercession. That's next. Don't go away. Welcome back. Adriana Zollicoffer is a passionate writer with a diverse background in psychology and mental health. She is deeply committed to making a positive impact on the lives of others. But beyond her professional endeavors, she finds fulfillment in helping others on their spiritual journey, specifically prayer. In her books, Prayers from the Heart of the Pursuer, Volumes 1 and 2, she is doing just that. And Adriana is here with us live in the studio. We're so happy to have you, Adriana. Thank Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to talk with you because we met at a conference some yes. years ago, but I wanted to talk with you because you're such a fascinating young person, and we'll get into the prayer aspect of your ministry. But first of all, how did you come to faith in Jesus Christ? So my dad is a pastor. 
And as a preteen, I remember going to my mom in front of our washing machine and telling her, I want to be saved. So I received salvation at a, a young tender age. And ever since then, I've had a relationship with God. But recently, within the last few years, I've been really getting to know God for myself. Mm -hmm. um, so my faith has been built over the last like five years. It, it's really grown tremendously. Well, I love the fact that you've written two books on prayer. Mm -hmm. um, and it's fascinating because, you know, how did you know First of all, what does prayer mean to you as a young person? I mean, you're 20 in your 20s mm -hmm. and you're talking about prayer. So what does prayer mean to you? Prayer for me simply is communication. I'm a talker, but learning to talk to God because he is the one who solves all of my issues, gives me answers, comfort, anything that I need, I've found in him. And so learning how to pray through church, the church that I'm at now, the Ramp Church Richmond, has taught me how to not only build a spiritual life, um, but how to be a better evangelist. And prayer has just become very, very important for me. I start my day with prayer. Um, I, I try to end my day with <laughs> prayer, so yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, when we think about millennials, mm -hmm. young people your age, you know, you don't see many of them really interested right in prayer, mm -hmm. first of all. So when did you know that you had this calling to be an intercessor, to really focus on prayer? I was first made aware of it um, in 2022. Uh, up until that point, I still was praying in my head. I wasn't praying out loud. I was still saying, you know, the kid grace and everything. But uh, the prayer leader at the time, he asked me to join the prayer team because I was praying on my Instagram stories mm -hmm. um, through words. And I've always been a writer. I've always been a journaler. So that was very, very easy for me to do. Um, so that's when I really learned that this is something that God has called me to do. Well, I love the fact that your books are filled with tons of prayers mm -hmm. that you've written from your heart. Mm -hmm. And you say a lot of them came from really painful mm -hmm. places, pa places of trauma, pa places of brokenness and frustration. Can you mm -hmm. talk about that for a little bit? Um, in 2022, I hit a really rocky period. Us as Christians, we would call it a wilderness. And um, I really had to get to know one God for myself, but I had to get to know who I was in him. And I went through a lot of traumatic situations. I went through a lot of relationship breakups, friendship breakups, um, a lot of self-identity, depression, anxiety, all, all the things. And at some point, the only person I could talk to was God. Um, I couldn't talk to my family. I couldn't talk to my friends. He was the only one who was willing to listen and actually help and comfort me at the same time. Mm -hmm. So a, a lot of the prayers that I wrote came from all of those places, the experiences that I was um, going through during that time. What, what's your advice for, for people, especially young people? Because you mentioned anxiety, mm -hmm. depression. There is a huge crisis right now yes. for young people with those issues. What advice do you give them uh, right now if they want to develop a deeper, more intimate prayer life with the Lord. Just realizing that prayer is literally just a conversation. Like we're having a conversation yeah. right now, not being afraid that you have to come with all of these grandiose words and um, reading scriptures all the time. Literally just telling God how you feel, being open, honest, and vulnerable with him. And also knowing that God is never intimidated by your feelings. He's not intimidated by your emotions. He wants to hear from you. So realizing that he has a desire to commune with you in the same way that you desire to commune with him, I think that that is the biggest barrier for people my age in, mm -hmm. in prayer. So letting that fall down, yeah. it'll get them right there. How would you say prayer has really transformed your life? <sighs> Learning to ask God when making heavy decisions, um, especially now that I'm coming up in my adulthood, um, he gives you wisdom that's in the word. Um, whenever I have to, like I said, make decisions on things or when I'm having severe emotions about an issue, knowing that God will give me the answer, mm. give me the comfort that I need. Um, it's transformed my mindset a lot. It's allowed me to be renewed. I no longer suffer with depression and anxiety because I go to God anytime I'm feeling those ways. Wow. Um, I no longer feel heartache the same way because I know how to deal with it now as Christ would want me to. And so really just learning to lean into being intimate with God has completely transformed my life. That's powerful. And these wonderful books, Prayers from the Heart of the Pursuer, The Blueprint, and The Treasure Chest, yes, your books, what do you want readers, once they've you know flipped through the pages, they've taken time to let it get into their hearts, mm -hmm. what do you want them taking away once they've closed the book? I really put my prayers on paper so that people could have a language because some people don't know what to say. 
Um, so to take away from it, I want them to develop a prayer language, their own words. Um, I also want them to see what it looks like to be completely, fully transparent with God. Like I said earlier, knowing that he's not intimidated by what you have to say and what you think and how you feel. Um, and just learning that God is who he says he is and he's yeah. faithful to hear you and he's faithful to answer. Amen. I love your prayer videos that you post mm -hmm. every Friday, every weekly Friday. on Facebook. Can you Faith tell us Friday. a little bit about that? So I developed the prayer closet in 2022. God gave me a vision for it and I was very nervous to do videos. <laughs> I didn't want to do it at all, but I knew that there was a demand um, and they helped me. Even now I go back through and read some of my prayers. I go back and listen to some of my videos. They encourage me still to this day. And just to hear the testimonies of people saying, wow, that's just what I needed. Wow. Um, that's gratifying enough for me, but it's, that's been transformative within itself. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to take, have you take a moment mm -hmm. to pray. You know, there's a lot of people right now who may be struggling with their prayer lives. They mm -hmm. want a closer walk with God. Um, would you um, just take a moment to pray for them? Yes, ma'am. Amen. Lord, first we just thank you for the gift of prayer. God, I just ask that whoever is watching this, whoever may be listening, I pray that they have a heart to find you. Lord, allow your Holy Spirit to seek them out and draw them closer to you. God, give them the words, the language, and the desire to commune with you in the intimate way that you desire to commune with them. God, bless the fellowship and bless the fruit that will come out of their prayer lives. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 And one last question for you, Adriana. Yes, for people who may be intimidated to pray publicly, mm -hmm. what would you say to them? You just got to do it. <laughs> Honestly, you just have to do it. Um, don't be afraid about stuttering and what people might think, realizing that even if it's people in the room, it's only you and God. His ears and his hearts are, his heart is the only one that truly, truly matters and pleasing him should always be the goal. Amen. So if you have an unction to intercede, Go with God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, we certainly appreciate it. Amen. Well, Adriana Zollicoffer's books, Prayers from the Heart, you see them on the screen there, From the Heart of Pursuer, The Blueprint, Volume 1, and The Treasure Chest, Volume 2, and they are both available on Amazon. Adriana, thank you so thank much you. for being with us today. God thank bless you. you as you continue to pray. I will. <laughs> Amen. Well, up next, how to maintain a deep connection with God even when we feel lost and forgotten. Also later, I'll be praying for you, so don't go anywhere. When times get tough, it's more important than ever to remember our God is the God of the mountain and also of the valley. It's something that Faith Yuri Cho knows all too well. And in her new book, she explores how to have friendship with God through it all. CBN's Ashley Key recently sat down with Faith to learn more about cultivating friendship with God. Take a look. In the course of our lives, we all go through wilderness seasons. In those desolate moments, it can feel like we've grown closer to pain than to progress and more acquainted with loneliness than companionship. But what if the purpose of the wilderness isn't just to reach a promised land, but to encounter a God who is still with us in the vast desert? Within the pages of Experiencing Friendship with God, speaker and pastor Faith Yuri Cho invites readers on a profound journey. Through her wisdom, she imparts practical insights on how to maintain a deep connection with God when we feel the most lost and forgotten. All right, well, joining me now is Faith Yuri Cho. Faith, yes. thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you for having me. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited to get into yes. this book. But before we do, I wanted to also talk about, you know, you're a pastor, you're mm -hmm. a mom, and you also work with Propel Women, yes. which is Christine Kane's ministry. So what mm -hmm. are you doing with that ministry? Well, with Propel Women, mm -hmm. I'm an Ecclesia coach, which is we coach women in ministry, wow. women that are giving up their whole lives to serve, to lead, mm -hmm. to preach. And so it's really exciting. Oh my goodness. Yes, yeah. girl, preach, girl, preach. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, we need that. Well, let's get into the book. It's called Experiencing Friendship with God, How mm -hmm. the Wilderness Draws Us to, our, to His Presence. That's yes. powerful. What inspired you to write the book? Well, it was a 20 year journey. Oops. Yeah, it was oh a 20 gosh. year journey. Wow. When the Lord revealed to me that I'll be writing books, I mean, yeah. I remember thinking at that time, 
how, <laughs> you know, how and what. Mm -hmm. And what he actually did for 20 years was lead me on a journey of just being with his presence and his presence mm -hmm. alone. But what really instigated the book was church planting during the pandemic. Wow. With four kids and two dogs. Oh my gosh. I mean, talk about a test of faith. <laughs> <laughs> and it really challenged me to ask myself, do I really believe what I preach? When mm -hmm. I say that the presence of God is enough, that the God that I preach about in the Bible, the one that mm -hmm. led and fed a nation for 40 years, is that true? Is that mm -hmm. still relevant for me? And during my time of church planting and, and trying to start something from nothing, wow. make make something happen and, and trust in him for mm -hmm. every sustenance yeah. and every moment, I mean, it really was what stirred me to start actually writing this book and putting pen to paper. I love that. Well, you also mentioned it's 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 also based out of, out, out of Brother Lawrence, who yes. was a monk in the 17th Absolutely. century, yeah. about his book, which is called Practicing the Presence. The Practice of the Presence. The Practice of the Presence. Okay. Yes. And so that inspired me when I was young. Yeah. But my point of tension there was, yeah. Well, I'm not a monk and I don't live in a <laughs> yeah. monastery. Yeah. What does it look like for somebody that lives in the 21st century and has 21st century demands and pace in life? Mm -hmm. What does it look like for a mother of children, young mm -hmm. children at that? What does it look like for somebody with a schedule? Is the busyness of our lives, is it always in competition to our wow. intimacy with God? Are we constantly always in debt yeah. when it comes to intimacy with the Lord? And those 20 years of preparing for this book was mm -hmm. what um, allowed me to formulate and clarify these concepts. I love that. Well, for those who are watching, you know, you talk about experiencing his presence specifically in the wilderness. So yeah. not when times are going really good, right. but when, you know, we're in the valley of life, but for some who might be watching, they might not have ever heard that kind of Christianese term of the wilderness. What is the wilderness for yeah. Christians? The wilderness is when we are in the tension of experiencing something that we don't know of God, as in we may think God is a healer, but why is he not healing? Mm. We may believe God is a provider, but why is there's so much lack. It's when what we know of God and what we're experiencing mm -hmm. is having some dissonance yeah. and when there's a disparity and when we feel like we are going through a barrenness where we don't feel yeah. like our spiritual walk is being fruitful. Like what are the evidences mm -hmm. you know, of, of our faith? Like what is, what is the evidence? What is, what is the point even? And oftentimes we realize during this season that there's a lot of things that affirm our faith and that's tested during the wilderness yeah, season. Definitely. Yeah. Well, you also talk about how oftentimes when we're in the wilderness, when we're going through hard times, we want answers and we want it now. We're like, Lord, why is this happening? But you talk about the, the mystery of God and yeah. that's important for us to really hold on to. Talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. We have to all experience some level of mystery. Yeah. Now that mystery could be circumstantial. Mm -hmm. Like, why are we going through this, God? Mm -hmm. That mystery could be experiential, something that we experience with the Lord. And that's a good sign because often when we are journeying with the Lord, we may mistake the mystery as rejection. Wow. We may mistake the mystery as abandonment from the Lord when actually it's an opportunity. The fact that he cannot be fully understandable to us hmm. is such a good sign. That just means he's that much bigger, that much greater. Mm. And if anything, it's an invitation to learn his higher ways, yes. to understand his higher thoughts. Yeah. And so the mystery does not need to discourage us from befriending the Lord. If anything, it should encourage us. I hope that this interview with Faith has really encouraged your heart. If you're watching it's not by accident. Let me tell you, God has ordained for you to see and hear what you heard and saw on this interview today. And God is just wanting you to just come a little closer. You heard Adriana earlier talking about prayer, being in the presence of God and just pouring your heart, talking 
to him about what's on your heart. And then you're hearing faith talking about, you know, the wilderness, but God knows exactly who you are and where you are and what you need. And guess what? The Bible calls him a friend. He's not only our Savior and our Lord, but he is your friend that you can talk to, that you can tell him your deepest, darkest secrets. So Lord, I just pray for those who are watching today who feel that they can't pray, that their prayers aren't effective, who feel that they're in a wilderness or a dry season in their lives. I just pray, Lord God, right now, that you would draw them by your Holy Spirit into a place with you in intimate prayer that they have never experienced before, a place where they can just let go and talk to you, pour their hearts out to you and find you in ways that they never imagined, Father God, that they'll sense your presence, Father, and be healed in your presence, be encouraged and strengthened and nourished in your presence. I pray, Father, that during this season of hardships in their lives, maybe they've suffered loss, Father God, of a loved one or a job or a relationship. I just pray that they would find you in such a way because as your word says, we will seek you. When we seek you, we will find you. When we knock, the door will be open. When we ask, it will be given unto us. So I pray that they'll go on a journey of asking, seeking, and knocking, Lord God, for your presence. And you will reveal yourself to them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, we're going to be right back with more of the prayer link right after this. Don't go away. And finally, we leave you with this very inspiring story. A decades-long commitment to driving school buses earned one Minnesota man an impressive new title. Jim Oppergaard now holds the Guinness World Record, get this, for the oldest bus driver at 94 years old. After nearly 50 years of driving for children with special needs, Oppegaard's boss says he is, he's never missed a day of work and he still passes his physical and driving tests with flying colors. Look at him. The record holder says the secret to long life is God's blessing. Praise God for him. And that's going to do it for this edition of Prayer Link. Stay connected with us on Instagram at The Prayer Link. God bless you all. See you next time.